It was Christmas Eve in the Austrian Alps near Salzburg. Father Joseph Moore prepared for the Christmas Eve service. Prospects for his carefully planned music seemed ruined upon learning that the church organ was not functioning. He did not want to disappoint his flock and decided that he must write his own Christmas hymn in order to have music for the special service. Upon completing the text, he took it to his organist, Franz Gruber, who asked him to compose and asked him to compose a simple tune. That night, December 24, 1818, so 201 years ago, Joseph Moore and Franz Gruber sang their new hymn to the accompaniment of Gruber's guitar. The hymn we know as Silent Night made a deep impact on the parishioners. When the organ repairman came to the church, he heard about what had happened and acquired a copy of the text in two. He soon spread the hymn throughout the region, and today it is sung all around the world. Another story is told about an impromptu ceasefire on Christmas Eve 1914 during World War I on the Western Front. That night, deep in trench warfare, Allied soldiers heard something unexpected in the air. Although they did not understand the German words to Stille Nacht, they did recognize the tune. When the German soldiers finished singing, their foes broke out into cheers. Allied soldiers replied in song with the English version of the carol. Singing continued throughout the night, and something even more remarkable happened Christmas morning. German and Allied soldiers emerged from the trenches to wish each other a Merry Christmas. My love for Silent Night began with attending the annual Christmas Eve service at my home church, Shiloh Terrace, which is just down the road from here. Every year I looked forward to, the clo to closing the service with unaccompanied voices singing Silent Night as the candlelight would spread throughout the sanctuary and hands lifted high. I remember the beautiful silence that lingered for a while after the singing was done. My love for this Christmas hymn grew even more when I became a member of the North Mesquite High School Chorale under the direction of Mr. Tom Council. I learned that concluding each Christmas concert with the singing of this beautiful arrangement by Miss Didi Dusan was a tradition. One year we performed it here in this very room on a combined Christmas concert with Mesquite and West Mesquite High Schools and I believe that Ms. Dusan was in attendance that night. Moving into more recent history, and I'm taking a pause for my notes right here, because Ryan Fortner didn't make me write it out because he knew I would go too long. <laughs> but I'm going to take just a short liberty, as a person that I would. You can talk as long as you want. shock of having them all together for the first time. Today's been very special. But I will say that when I um, got the opportunity to go back and teach voice at my high school, I thought, what a neat thing. And I met this man named Ryan Ford, who I talked to on the phone, who was nothing like what I thought he was going to be when I met him. <laughs> and um, so, for, so immediately, really, there was this clicking, as he said, you know, and, and even though he's my boss, I feel like he's really like my little brother. Oh, he doesn't agree. He's my, he is. He's boss. Um, I am bossy. He always says, he always says you're my bossy big sister. It's true. But truly, it's not close, next to my husband and my son, there's nobody I'm closer to. Then Ryan Fortner and so. And um, so he, you know, a few years back, he's like, oh, don't you want to get your teaching certificate so we can always teach together? And so I moved out of a role. I never thought I would be a high school choir director. Um, but I love it so much. And so in this room tonight, we have lots of students who were my voice students for many years and now are, um, and some who have, have been under my direction as a choir director. Um, I do want to thank my husband because when I took this new job, it was a big adjustment for him, a big time adjustment from my little voice teaching to becoming a choir director. But now I'm going to go back to my notes. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so, recent history. Silent Night was not performed on the very first few chamber Christmas concerts because it was a chorale tradition. However, after a few years, we all decided it would also be a chamber tradition. And a few years back, Ryan asked me if I would like to direct this piece. 
Here he comes! <laughs> no, I'm just... Mm. <laughs> to me. It's very personal to me. And um, he's, he's given me a lot of opportunities um, through the years that a lot of head directors don't do. And I really, I appreciate it. I don't want to be sappy about him because he'll get the big head. <laughs> <laughs> but sharing my love for this piece and making music with all these students fills me with so much joy. These beautiful people have filled our hearts with love that will last a lifetime. Some say that we have shaped them, but the real truth is that they should have shaped who we are as well. So, without further ado, we hope you're blessed by our performance of Didi Dusan's Silent Night. 